Hello and welcome to another video. This is the third episode of the story, in which Naruto has a life-changing experience during the wave mission, and his life takes a dramatic turn. This story is from a fittith make sure to support him, her. Please like and subscribe to show your support. Let's get started. Everyone but Sasuke and Daso were at the arena. The people were restless. Naruto could smell Orochimaru all around. Where is he? Naruto thought as his eyes darted around. Naruto suddenly saw feathers floating around. A genjutsu? Naruto thought as he felt drowsy. Naruto raised his eyebrow and released the genjutsu easily. Naruto looked and saw Gara, Tamari, and Kenkuro walking away. So you were right. Hinata said as Naruto nodded when they saw the sand swirling around Gara. Looks like we won't be holding back. Naruto said as red chakra started to bubble around him, and white chakra shredded Hinata's shirt, and, think Sui Feng and Yorochi when they enter their shunko, as her wings manifested themselves. Be careful Hinata Haim. Naruto said as he dropped to all fours and grew into a large nine-tailed kitsune. Naruto launched forward and grabbed onto Gara, and the two vanished in fire. Several miles away Naruto could feel something off happening. I have to get back to the village. Naruto thought. Summon me I have more than enough to wipe the floor with Shikaku faulty seal or not. QB told him as he quickly reverted back to himself. Naruto went through a few hand signs. Summon. Naruto yelled as a giant nine-tailed kitsune appeared again. Go Naruto-kun you have a fight that you need to do in Konoha. Kyubi said. I hope Naruto will forgive me for not telling him. Kyubi thought as Naruto nodded and leapt away. So you think you can beat me Shikaku container? Kyubi asked. With Naruto Naruto could feel people running up behind him. Enemies. Naruto thought before concentrating his chakra and vanished in the void Shunshin. Naruto could see Hinata's blessed jutsus being fired off around Konoha. She sure is powerful. Naruto thought with a smirk as he repeatedly vanished in the void Shunshin. Blessed art, angelic wings. Hinata exclaimed as she released a huge blast of light at Naruto. Darkness art, arc of darkness. Naruto exclaimed quickly as the two attacks met and fought for dominance. Damn Hinata Haim. Naruto mumbled as he looked around. What is happening here? Naruto asked. Sand and sound has launched attacks on us. Hinata said. Blessed art, feather daggers. Hinata exclaimed as she launched some of her feathers at a couple of sound shinobi killing them. They outnumber us twelve to one. Wind style, blade cyclone. Naruto exclaimed as he launched a cyclone at four sound shinobi killing them. QB is fighting Gara right now. Naruto said. Where is the... Naruto trailed off as he felt a familiar feeling wash over him. Oh god no. Naruto whispered as he looked at the purple cube. Naruto instant vanished in a burst of speed Hinata was close behind him with her wings flapping desperately to keep up with Naruto. Naruto landed on the roof of the building with the purple cube. Naruto went to touch the cube when a hand stopped him. Uzumaki-san that is unwise this barrier burns anything that touches it. An umbu said. Then I will crush it. Naruto said with a low growl as he grew and fur spread across him. Now standing in Konoha once again was the nine-tailed fox except this one was blonde. Naruto dropped a large paw onto the cube to find that it withstood barely to the massive weight. This barrier is stronger than I thought it would be. Naruto rumbled as he looked up and leapt. Every shinobi stopped and watched Naruto vanish from sight. Suddenly a blonde sphere dropped like a stone and slammed into the barrier sending flames everywhere. Cracks started to form in the barrier when suddenly is smashed into thousands of pieces. Naruto reverted back to his original form before Saratobi fell too far. Why old man why did you use that jutsu? 
Naruto asked with tears in his eyes. I had to protect the leaf village Naruto. Sarutobi said weakly. He saw that Naruto's eyes were blood red. Kuku kuku Naruto-kun I have a surprise for you. Orochimaru said before the sound four vanished with their master. Orochimaru. Naruto roared as red chakra started to boil around him. Naruto, watch out. Sarutobi said before falling limp. Naruto barely rolled out of the way before two figures slammed into the ground. Naruto rolled onto his feet and stood straight. He looked right at his attackers and all he saw was long blonde spiky hair and long bright red hair. No. Naruto whispered as the red chakra left him. Hello Naruto-kun. The woman said. I wish we didn't have to meet in. This way. She added as the two figures stood up. You have grown so much Naruto-kun. The blonde added as he stood too. Every Kanoha shinobi able to see the two figures stopped and stared. No. Naruto whispered again. Kushinachan I don't want to fight him. The man said. I know Minato-kun and neither do I. Kushina told Minato. Blessed art, Thousand Feather Barrage. Hinata roared as she launched her attack at Kushina. Kushina had easily blocked all the attack. Naruto-kun you will not fight alone in this fight. Hinata said landing next to her beloved. Naruto could see Kushina and Minato struggling to fight the control. Who is this Naruto-kun? Kushina asked. This is my beloved Hinataheim. Naruto said. Hitomi-chan's daughter? Minato asked as he was losing the control. We don't have much longer to talk. Hinata this is my fight you have to stay out of this. Naruto said. These two are the strongest shinobi ever. He added pulling his katana out and Kushina gasped. Is that the Uzumaki katana? Kushina asked as Naruto nodded. Well good luck my little boy. Kushina said as Minato and Kushina attacked Naruto. He was blocking the attacks. He is already a master at the katana. Kushina thought as she unwillingly attacked him with her katana. Dad hasn't used the Hiration no Jutsu yet. Naruto thought. He must be fighting to keep from using that Jutsu. Naruto thought again when he noticed something. He isn't using his tripronged kunai. He thought before slicing through one of Minato's kunai. Naruto closed his eyes. He can't possibly know that jutsu. Kushina thought as he held his katana out. I am sure mom knows this jutsu. Naruto said. The true katan. Naruto yelled as he started spinning slicing Minato's last kunai and leaving a large gash in Kushina's katana. Minato had a soft smile on his face. You will become strong Naruto-kun just like me, no not like me, you will be stronger. Minato said softly. I guess I will. Naruto said wiping a few tears away. Naruto sidestepped an attack from Minato and blocked an attack from Kushina. They are faster than me. Naruto thought as he continued to defend against his parents. Naruto was thinking of a plan as he defended against the two looking for an opening. You will have to attack us at some point Naruto-kun. Kushina said as she attacked. Now. Naruto thought. I don't want to kill you but I will have to. Naruto said before he held his arms out to the sides and felt the Minato's kunai and Kushina's katana pierce his stomach. Naruto coughed up blood on the two as he wrapped his arms around the two. I love you too. Naruto said with blood dripping from his mouth before stabbing his katana and a kunai into the bases of Minato's and Kushina's head in an upward direction slicing the anchor seal in their heads in half. He had tears in his eyes. We love you too Naruto-kun. Kushina said as she felt her spirit leaving her. My son protect Hinata-chan with your life. Minato said as the two fell backwards. 
Naruto still had the kanais and katana in his stomach as he tilted his head back and let out a mighty roar that stopped the fighting. Naruto. Hinata whispered as she felt her stomach drop. I will make you pay for this Orochimaru. Naruto roared into the skies as everyone saw his tears streaming down his face. He felt two arms wrap around him from behind. Naruto-kun I am here for you. Hinata whispered into his ear as she glanced at the wound in his stomach. Lie down Naruto-kun. Hinata said as she laid him down. I am fine hinata -haim. Naruto said. Naruto you have two kunai and a katana in your stomach. Hinata said dryly. I have had worse. Naruto said before quickly throwing his katana behind Hinata and embedded it guard deep into a sound shinobi's chest. I cannot stop just because I am wounded. Naruto said as he weakly stood. He gripped the guard of his mother's katana and pulled it out spraying blood everywhere. Uzumaki-sama Hinata-sama is correct you cannot fight. An umbu said. Naruto was surprised. What did you call me? Uzumaki-sama, it is a law that if no living Hokage is alive the most powerful shinobi will become a temporary Hokage of sorts. The umbu told Naruto. And you just took out both Kushina-sama and Minato-sama. He added. That makes you the strongest shinobi in Konoha. And the job of the Hokage is to protect the villagers. Naruto said. Even if it means death. Naruto said as he. Staggered over to his katana and pulled it out of the sound shinobi. Naruto sheathed his katana before pulling the kunai out of his stomach. What do you want us to do with Gara? an umbu asked. Kyuubi is fighting him. He said when he felt Kyuubi's mental connection open. Naruto-kun I wasn't able to beat him I lost more chakra than I thought, he is about five minutes away. Kyuubi told him. I will have to fight him. Naruto said as he turned to the giant form approaching Konoha. Naruto held his stomach as blood started to flood from his mouth. Naruto-kun I cannot heal you my chakra is too low. Kyuubi told him. Okay. Naruto said as he spit out some blood. Hinata go to the academy and protect the students. Naruto ordered. Three umbu go with her. He added as the nodded. Naruto turned to Gara and leapt away leaving a trail of blood behind him. How much before I pass out from blood loss? Naruto asked. Ten minutes at the most. Kyuubi told him as he made it to the walls of Konoha. He stopped and pulled his cloak and shirt off to reveal three puncture holes in his stomach. Naruto pulled some bandages out and quickly wrapped them up trying to stop the blood flow. How about now? Naruto asked. Still ten minutes. Kyuubi told him as he leapt away as he slipped his cloak on. You are bleeding internally and the bandages barely stem the flow of blood leaving you. Kyuubi told him. Now no more talking this connection takes chakra too that I don't have right now. Kyuubi said as she cut the connection. Naruto coughed up more blood. Shit she is right. Naruto thought as he appeared in front of Gara. Ha so Naruto Uzumaki has finally shown up to fight me. Gara said before laughing like a maniac. I will stop you Gara. Naruto said as he looked at the giant form. He went through a series of hand signs as he dodged Gara's sand attacks. Water style, water dragon jutsu. Naruto yelled as a giant water dragon went into the air. He started more hand signs. Lightning style, lightning wolf pack. Naruto yelled as the water dragon hit the giant raccoon soaking the sand in water. Forty lightning wolves leapt at Gara's soaked form and electrocuted him making him scream in pain. Naruto held his arm out. Wind style, great cyclone. Naruto exclaimed as a cyclone blasted Gara's sand launching it away from him. Naruto was panting. I don't have much left. Naruto thought weakly as he panted. Nice work Naruto Uzumaki. Gara said as sand started to swirl around him again. 
playing possum jutsu. Gara yelled as he slumped forward. I am free. Shikaku yelled. I can't beat her alone. Naruto thought as he pressed his palm to his stomach. Please work. Naruto thought as he started a set of hand signs. Summoning Jutsu. Naruto yelled as a huge puff of smoke appeared. Shit that took up most of my chakra that I have left. Naruto thought as the bleeding intensified. He had been using his chakra to keep the bleeding down. Naruto gripped his stomach in pain. Looks like I will have frog legs for lunch. Shikaku roared. Boy you sure do know how to pick your enemies, I mean come on the Shikaku? Gamabunta asked. Things, happen. Naruto said. Gamabunta looked up at Naruto. What happened to you? He asked before dodging an air attack from Shikaku. I had to fight, my mom, and dad. Naruto said between coughing up blood. I need to wake the Jinchuriki to get rid of the Shikaku. Naruto added weakly. Can you hold her still? He asked. If you haven't noticed I don't have fangs or claws and I am not good with the transformation jutsu. Gamabunta said before spitting out balls of water and hit the balls of air. One ball of air made it past the balls of water and slammed into Gamabunta making him fall backwards. Have a few more of those and I will be in trouble. Gamabunta said. Here we go brat, he exclaimed as he leapt towards Gara in a burst of speed. Ah uh, I don't know what to do. Naruto yelled before concentrating on a form. Suddenly a giant black fox appeared as Gamabunta latched onto Shikaku with his newly acquired teeth and claws. Do it now! Gamabunta exclaimed. Naruto leapt off of Gamabunta's head as the jutsu came off and was in front of Gara when the sand caught him. This won't stop me! Naruto yelled as he slammed his head into Gara's head jerking him awake. Gamabunta leapt away from the stalking form as Gara woke up. He pulled his giant katana out and launched at Gara and slashed. At the form of the beast with his sword and barely was able to cut through it. His katana had flown out of his hands. Naruto I am running out of chakra. Gamabunta said as he watched the sand form fall apart. Suddenly Gamabunta puffed away leaving his katana behind. Gara and Naruto were facing each other from branches of opposite trees. The two were breathing hard. This will be my last attack. Naruto thought as he saw Gara twitch and the two launched at each other. Gara's fist connected with Naruto's stomach as Naruto's fist connected with Gara's chin breaking his jaw. The two started to fall to the ground. Naruto hit a few branches on the way down slowing his descent but breaking his legs and arm in the process. Naruto hit the ground and felt his ribs break. Naruto looked across seeing Gara lying on his back. I have to knock him out. Naruto thought weakly as he tried to move but couldn't move anything but his neck. Naruto painfully dug his chin into the ground and pulled himself towards Gara. Why, why, do, you, try, so, hard? Gara asked. Because I have, people dear to me, to protect. Naruto said as images of people started to flash through his mind. I know, your, feelings Gara, loneliness, anger, sorrow, but unlike, you I found P.E., people to love. Naruto said as he moved closer to him. Love. Gara struggled to get out as Tamari and Kenkuro landed next to him. Gara. Tamari exclaimed. Tamari. Gara trailed off as Tamari helped him up. Tamari, do, you, love, me? Gara struggled out. Of course I do Gara, you are my precious little brother. Tamari said. What has Naruto kun done to Gara? Tamari thought as she saw Gara pass out. She turned to Naruto to see that he was passed out too. Two Umbu landed next to Naruto and lifted him up. You two show get him to the hospital. The Umbu ordered Tamari and Kankuro. We will take Uzumaki-sama. 
the Umbu said as they leapt away. Three days later it has been three days since the invasion and Naruto was still unconscious. Since Hinata was his girlfriend she was forced into overseeing the shinobi ranks until Naruto has awoken. She was currently doing paperwork in Naruto's room and dreading every minute of it. Ugh I wish I knew the shadow clone jutsu. Hinata thought as she signed another paper. How did I become the temporary Hokage again? She thought. Flashback three days ago Hinata had just made it to the academy to see four squads of sound shinobi outside of the academy with a pile of dead academy students and teachers outside. Hinata felt like vomiting but suppressed the urge. We have to get inside. Hinata said as her wings formed again. I will enter through the roof and you go through the back there will be at least one team back there. Hinata ordered as they nodded. Hinata flapped her wings and flew into the air. She easily landed on the roof unnoticed by the sound shinobi. The veins on the side of her head bulged. Be a kugan. Hinata thought as she gained 360 degrees of perfect vision she looked around the school looking for the students. She saw some in the cafeteria. Hinata snuck through the door on the roof and made her way through the halls towards the cafeteria. She pushed the door open and instantly blocked a kanai with her wings. Irika sensei it is me Hinata. Hinata said before being crushed in a hug by four children. Hello you four. Hinata said as she hugged her sister and her three friends Kanoamaru, Udon, and Moegi. Hinata what is happening? Irika asked. Sound and Suna invaded Kanoha. Hinata said. Naruto-kun is fighting Gara, the one-tailed Jinchuriki. Hinata added as she looked down. He also had to fight Minato Namikaze and Kushina Uzumaki who were temporarily brought back to life by Orochimaru's impure resurrections jutsu. Hinata said. He was able to beat them but at the cost of receiving three horrible wounds to his stomach. She explained. I saw that he was using his chakra to slow the bleeding down but that takes a lot of chakra. Hinata are you okay? Irika asked. I am fine, not a scratch my feathers can become harder than steel. She told him. But we need to find a way out of here. Hinata said. There is no way. An umbu said landing next to her and she immediately embedded her wing into the man's chest. How? Did you know I wasn't an umbu? the man asked before falling over dead. I am a Hayaga. Hinata said to the dead man. Byakugan. Hinata exclaimed as her Byakugan activated. The two umbu sent with me are dead. Four teams guard the front and two teams guard the back. Irika sensei is there any tunnels in the cellar? Hinata asked as she tried to look. I don't know. Irika said. The principal would have known but he died during the rush protecting the students. Irika told her as Hinata pulled him and the other teachers away from the students. What is it Hinata? Hokage-sama has died, the umbu has placed Naruto as head of the village till another is found suitable. Hinata told them as they gasped. We need to get to the cellar because it is more defendable than here. Hinata said as she looked at the windows. I will take the middle Irika sensei and you will take the front, you will take between them and me and you two take the back. Hinata said as she pointed at them. Hinata suddenly saw a chakra signature appear on the roof. Who is that? Hinata thought as she saw the figure running through the halls towards them. Hinata's eyes widened when she realized who it was. Father. Hinata thought as she saw Hayashi burst through the doors. They are becoming restless out there. Hayashi said with his Byakugan active. What are you doing here Hayashi-sama? One of the instructors asked. My daughter was in danger and I find my other daughter here too. Hayashi said. Think about it. Hayashi added. What is the plan? He asked. We are going to the cellar father. Hinata said. You will be protecting the middle with me. She ordered as Hayashi raised his eyebrow and nodded. 
Okay students we need you to line up in rows of three. Hinata said in her motherly tone. Hanabi-chan you stay close to me. Why does she get special treatment, called one of the students. She has activated her Byakugan. Hayashi stated simply. Hers isn't as strong as my own or Hinata's but it is better than nothing. Hayashi explained as Hanabi blushed a little. Come on hurry up please. Hinata said as the students lined up. I hope I can save them all. Hinata thought as they started to move through the halls. Stop now, she called as everyone stopped. I will take him. Hayashi said as he walked past the students towards a tall man. Hey you think you can beat me, the man asked as Hayashi looked up at him with calm collective eyes. Be careful father. Hinata and Hanabi called as Hinata moved the students out again. Hinata's Byakugan was darting around looking for any traces of enemies. Where are all of them I am sure some would have sneaked in. Hinata thought when her eyes caught sight of a faint chakra signature. Hanabi-chan do you know the chakra signatures of all the students known in the academy? Hinata whispered as Hanabi nodded faintly. Look at the plant on the far left. Hinata Nechan that is no one I know of. Hanabi said as Hinata nodded as went through a quick sequence of hand signs and flapped her wings going into the air. Blessed art, thousand feather barrage. Hinata exclaimed as her feathers launched at the person who deflected most of the feathers. Hinata smirked. Blessed art, thousand feather barrage cyclone. Hinata exclaimed again as the feathers started to spin around the man slicing him up and killing him. Hinata could feel the drain of using those attacks had on her. Let's get moving. Hinata said as she landed on the ground with her feathers returning to her wings. Hinata Nechan you are weakening are you alright? Hanabi whispered. This is nothing Hanabi-chan I will be fine. She told her younger sister as they continued on their way. I don't know if I will be able to do that jutsu a third time. Hinata thought as her sister looked at her suspiciously. Hinata we are almost there, called Irika. Okay. She called back as the group came to a door. She watched as Irika's partner opened the door. Hinata reacted quickly and moved to the front of the ground in a blink of an eye as her wings grew and protected everyone but the instructor from an explosion. That took a lot more of my chakra. She thought as she tucked her wings back behind her and she turned to the man. He is severely injured but alive. Hinata said as Irika and herself lifted the man up and moved him down the stairs into the cellar. They knew we would go to the cellar but I don't sense anything nor can my Byakugan see anything. Hinata thought as she looked around. Hinata smirked a little as she went and pushed a button and a piece of the wall moved back and moved to the side. Hinata saw. Movement on the edges of her vision. They are coming, go and escort them. Hinata ordered Irika. But. Do it. Hinata ordered firmly as she walked toward stairs. Irika shook his head and lead the student into the corridor. Hinata had made it to the top of the stairs to see all six squads in front of her. I might not survive this. Hinata thought as she looked at the sound shinobi. Has she is kinda cute maybe we should play with her a bit. A man said. I don't appreciate you talking about my daughter like that. A male voice said behind the group before two of them fell. 8 trigrams 64 palms. A feminine voice exclaimed as a man sneaking up behind Hinata fell to the ground Hinata turned to see Hanabi standing behind her. We are family Hinata Nechan. Hanabi said smiling. We will fight together. She added as the group attacked the two girls. Katen, a male voice exclaimed as a dome of chakra threw two of the men back. Niji and Isan. Hinata exclaimed. Hello Hinata-sama. Niji said. Like Hanabi-sama said we are family and we will fight together. He said as they all attacked the squads. Blessed art, feather barrage. Hinata exclaimed as a few hundred feathers launched at the shinobi. 
Blessed art, feather barrage cyclone. Hinata exclaimed as the feathers started to circle the men faster and faster as Hanabi, Niji, and Hayashi incapacitated or kill the shinobi. Hinata dropped to one knee. Hinata-sama are you okay? Niji asked. I will be fine. Hinata said as she stood. I will need a good night's rest to gain my chakra back. Hinata thought. You are lying to me Hinata-sama. Niji stated calmly. I just need some rest that is all, but I can't as long as this invasion is going on. Hinata said. Don't push yourself Hinata-sama. Niji said. I won't. Hinata promised. Let's go, Niji you escort Hanabi-chan back to the other's father and I will go help the other shinobi. Hinata said as he nodded but Hanabi was reluctant. Hinata nodded and Niji pressed his fingers to the back of Hanabi's head making her pass out. Niji lifted her and ran away towards the tunnel. Hinata how much longer can you last? Hayashi asked seriously. I can only fight with Taijutsu. Hinata said. If I use any more chakra I will pass out. She told her father as the two leapt away. The gentle fist relies on chakra. Hayashi said. Kyubi-chan has been training me for the past month in both the gentle fist style and another. Hinata said shocking Hayashi. And no she isn't a demon. She added as she leapt away. Hinata and Hayashi landed on the ground and the two worked expertly together and killed the two men attacking Kanoha Shinobi. Come we are going to the arena where there is still people. Hinata ordered, one of the men opened their mouths but closed it immediately because of Hayashi's glare. They landed to find Kakashi and Guy fighting multiple sound shinobi. Hinata smirked as she saw the few sound shinobi alive. Blessed art, guided feathers of death. Hinata exclaimed as the a hundred feathers launched her off of her wings and flew towards the sound shinobi embedding themselves into the necks, chest, and stomachs of the sound shinobi. Hinata fell into the arms of her father. Few hours later Hinata woke to find herself in a white room. She looked around to see Naruto in the bed next to her. My churka is still low. She thought as she weakly sat up. She saw Umbu stationed in the room. Hinata-sama it is good that you are awake. An Umbu said. What has happened? Hinata asked. Naruto-sama beat Gara. A woman said. He is currently unconscious with a combination of severe blood loose and chakra exhaustion. She told her. Since you have proven to be a good leader and with Naruto-sama unconscious you will have to take over as leader because you are also his girlfriend and knows him best. She said. W what? Hinata stuttered. You are the leader until either Naruto awakens or a better more suited leader is picked. The woman told her. Right now the council has been awaiting for either of you to awaken. Take me to them. Hinata ordered as she weakly got out of the bed. Flashback and it was a horrible council meeting. All she could make out was the words Jiraiya, Hokage and Next. Ugh they gave me such a headache. She thought as she rubbed her temples. Naruto-kun why can't you wake up already? Hinata asked. Hmm what? A groggy voice asked. Naruto-kun. Hinata exclaimed turning around. To see her blonde boyfriend rubbing his eye and winced in pain. He looked at his stomach to see he still had blood seeping from his stomach. Don't move you are still hurt, she exclaimed before gently pushing back to the bed. What happened? Naruto asked. You have been unconscious for three days. Hinata said. And I have been worried sick. She added. Sorry? Naruto asked as he winced in pain. What has happened while I was out? Naruto asked. Um somehow because me being you girlfriend placed me in the temporary Hokage position. Hinata said. I basically signed papers. She groaned a little. Okay. Naruto said sitting up straighter. 
the council has been looking for a new Hokage. Hinata said. Aero sensei was nominated but he declined because he has to keep his spy network up. She added as Naruto nodded. Don't ever do something like that again. Hinata whispered before hugging him. I cannot promise that. Naruto said as he wrapped his arms around her. But I will try not to get hurt like that again. Naruto added as he squeezed her a little. Sorry to interrupt you too but I need Naruto to come with me. Jiraiya said from the window. But he just woke up. Hinata exclaimed. The next Hokage has been picked. Jiraiya said. And Naruto and I are going to go retrieve her. He added. Okay. Naruto said as he sat up while grabbing his stomach. Naruto. I have to do this Hinataheim. Naruto said interrupting the girl. I promise to take it easy. He added. Okay. Hinata reluctantly agreed. When do we leave? Naruto asked. Thirty minutes. Jiraiya said before vanishing. Naruto let out a shaky breath. Naruto-kun you can't go you are still seriously hurt. Hinata said. I have to. Naruto said. For the same reason Sarutobi Gigi didn't cancel the Chunnin exams when he found out about Orochimaru, we need to keep up a strong front. Naruto explained as he lifted his shirt over his head with difficulty. Hinata shook her head and helped him put his clothes on. Please be safe Naruto-kun. Hinata said. I will try my best. Naruto replied before releasing another shaky breath. You have to be safe too. Naruto told her. I will try my best too Naruto-kun. Hinata said before hugging him. It will take us a while to make it to the gate. She added. You are a hero now. Oh no. Naruto whispered. That means more fan girls. Naruto whispered again as Hinata let loose a low growl. They won't touch my Naruto-kun. Hinata said in a dangerous voice. I wouldn't want anyone else but you to touch me. Naruto whispered into her ear sending a pleasant shiver down her back. My little arrow Tenchi. He added making her blush. You shouldn't say something like that. Hinata mumbled shyly. Naruto left a light kiss on her neck making a soft moan escape her lips. W we should get going before we get too into this and Aero sensei comes to get you. Hinata whispered huskily. Hm I could always place that sound and sight barrier up. Naruto whispered into her ear. A as tempting as that is I have to decline. Hinata said as she gently pushed him away. You are hurt and I may get a bit rough at times. Hinata admitted with a soft blush. Naruto rubbed his shoulder in remembrance. Yeah you're right. Naruto said as he slipped into his cloak with a groan of pain. I still think you shouldn't go. Hinata told him. I know that Hinataheim. Naruto said. But the arrow sensei want. Don't call me that. Both Hinata and Naruto heard a distant yell. Naruto blinked a few times. Well that was odd. Naruto said as he leaned in to kiss her but she pulled away. Nah uh. Hinata said. No kisses till you are healed. Hinata added. Think of it as a punishment. She said. Naruto pouted before flipping his hood up. You sure know how to punish a guy. Naruto mumbled before wrapping an arm around Hinata for support as he walked. When the two made it out of the hospital he was surprised that people actually stopped and asked if he was okay. Naruto would always reply that he was fine now even though his wound was still bleeding. Naruto-kun remembered to change the bandage every other hour. Hinata told him as they made it to the gate. And to clean it out before re-bandaging it. She told him. Yes Hinata-chan. Naruto said. I will know if you don't take proper care of it. Hinata added as she pointed to her eyes. I will know if you are lying. 
She added. Okay Hinata-chan we need to be going. Naruto said. By Naruto-kun I will be missing you. She said. I know. Naruto said smirking. Come on Naruto we have to go. Jiraiya yelled. Fine you old pervert. Naruto yelled back angrily and instantly winced in pain. Damn, he hissed in pain and limped over towards Jiraiya. I am still injured you know. Naruto said in pain as he indicated to his stomach. And for some odd reason Kubichan hasn't fixed it. Naruto added. Fine come here. Jiraiya said as he went through a set of hand signs and hovered his hand over his stomach. Kyuubi will be out of commission for a while. He said. She has almost no chakra. Well that sucks. Naruto said as the two started to walk away. Three days later Naruto and Jiraiya were walking into a border village that are scattered around the land of fire. Naruto had to change his bandages again and they needed to gather information and food. Okay Naruto we will be staying here for a few days. Jiraiya said. And I will teach you the three downfalls of a male shinobi. They are money, females, and gambling. Jiraiya said. Now hand over your money pouch. He ordered. Why should I? Naruto asked. You have more money than I do and you peep on women and you gamble. Naruto said as women started to glare at Jiraiya which Naruto returned squarely. He removed his hood and girls between the ages of 10 and 20 stared at the handsome boy. Plus I already have a girlfriend. Naruto said as the two heard groans of disappointment. A daring woman came up to him. Shinobi-kun, your girlfriend doesn't have to know if have a little fun. The woman said. My girlfriend is the heir of the Byakugan I think she would know. Naruto replied indifferently not noticing the woman's amazingly beautiful figure. I am free. Jiraiya said. Sorry I don't like old men. The woman said as she turned her attention back to Naruto. Byakugan? A Dejitsu of Konoha that is known as one of the most powerful in history, Anyone who wields it has the ability to see chakra, chakra points, and has x-ray vision meaning she could tell if I am lying. He added indifferently as he fished out his fat gama money pouch and threw it at Jiraiya and walked away. Jiraiya greedily looked into the pouch when pink dust puffed out covering him and was swiftly followed by a boxing glove attack to a spring, hitting him in the face. Jiraiya could hear Naruto's pained laughter in the distance. You shouldn't have looked you old perv. Naruto yelled painfully as he walked away. I will be at the hotel. Naruto called as he left the old man. Several women were laughing at Jiraiya as Naruto walked away. I will get that boy. Jiraiya thought as he looked into the pouch to see a note. Do not think of getting me back, my retaliation normally comes with property damage, signed Naruto. Jiraiya read as he looked at the Kitsune Hanyu drawn on the bottom of the note. With Naruto Naruto was walking around the village. Hmm seems to be a fair today. Naruto thought as he walked around looking at all the booths. Naruto saw one that sold masks. Naruto walked over and looked at the masks. Anything interest you? a man asked. Not really. Naruto replied truthfully. Me using a mask is kinda useless since most of the time I have my hood up. Naruto said. But my little brother and his three friends would like some. Naruto said. And, my Naruto thinks of Konoamaru as his little brother. Well how old are they, the man asked. Eight. Naruto replied. Two boys and two girls. Naruto added. Hmm the girls like these. He said laying out a few masks. And the boys like these. He added laying out more. Okay, I will take the cat, and bird masks for the girls and the dog and monkey masks for the boys. Naruto said as he placed some money on the counter. Thank you sir for coming. The man said as he placed the masks in a bag. 
Naruto continued on his way until he came to a kimono store. Naruto looked and walked in to see a 14-year-old girl behind the counter. Hmm how may I help you, the girl asked flirtatiously. Well I need to get a kimono for my girlfriend. Naruto said as he watched the girl deflate a little. Well I will need to know her bust size, waist, hip, height, eye color, hair color, and her favorite color. She said before Naruto told her Hinata's measurements and favorite color. You're kidding right? the girl asked. Nope. Naruto replied simply. What kind of blue is her favorite? she asked. See my. I color. Naruto asked as the girl nodded. A little darker than that. Wow you sure know a lot about your girlfriend how long have you known her? she asked. Five years. Naruto replied. How long have you been dating? she asked. Hmm almost three months. Naruto said stunning the girl. Sheesh I wish some of my late boyfriends were as observant as you. She mumbled. What kind of material do you want this made of? she asked. Don't worry you will find someone who will love you for you. Naruto said. And your finest and softest silk. Naruto added. Our best silk is expensive. She warned. Have you ever heard of the Black Death of Kanoha? Naruto asked with a well-hidden smirk. Yeah he is famous in the land of fire. She said matter-of-factly. I am a big fan of him. Well you are one of many of my fans. Naruto said shocking the girl. I am Naruto Uzumaki known as the Black Death of Kanoha. Naruto said bowing his head to her as she gawked at him. I would have bowed properly but a recent fight of mine has left me wounded in the stomach. Naruto told her. Why you art the b-black d-death, she stuttered as Naruto nodded. She let out a squeal. Wait till my friends hear that I am making something for the most desired man in the land of fire. She said between squeals of joy. Don't forget to tell them I am already taken. Naruto told her. I will give you half off if you kiss me. She told him. No need I can afford any price you hand out. Naruto said with a chuckle. Naruto-kun what is your secret? asked a voice that made Naruto stiffen. No it can't be. Naruto thought as he turned. Can I cut his legs and arms off so he can't pull another stunt like before? a tall blue man asked. Itachi Uchiha and Kisame. Naruto said as he looked at the two. Come with us Naruto-kun and no one will get hurt. Itachi said. Why don't we go outside so I can escape without making this shop explode like I did to that in last time. Naruto suggested. I do not fall for the same trick twice in a row Naruto-kun. Itachi said. I don't know if I will last a few seconds with them. Naruto thought as he saw Itachi activate his Manjikyu Sharingan. Naruto's eyes instantly lowered. You know I can control what you have in you right? Itachi asked. Well right now she is a bit low on chakra so I have none running though me. Naruto said as he burst through the window onto the street. Where is Aero-sensei? Naruto thought as he spun and painfully pulled his katana out. Naruto blocked a downward chop from Kisame and coughed up a bit of blood. Wind style, air strike slash. Naruto yelled as he unleashed an upward blade of wind. The wind forced Kisame into the air. Naruto grabbed his stomach as he weakly stood and glared at the two. Naruto could feel his blood flowing into the bandage. I won't last long like this. Naruto thought as he tried to stem the flow of blood. If you keep doing this I will bleed to death. Naruto warned trying to make them leave. Now that is unacceptable, Naruto-kun, what would Hinata-chan think of that? Itachi said. Don't you go near her. Naruto warned lowly. My my that warning is a bit late we just came from Kanoha. Itachi said calmly. Naruto took a threatening step forward but almost instantly fell to his knees. If you hurt her I will make you pay. 
Naruto said dangerously as he grasped his stomach in pain. He felt the blood-soaked bandages. Itachi, the three shinobi heard. They turned to see Sasuke. I have held my hate and now I will kill you. Sasuke yelled as his Sharingan flared to life. I thought you said that you were the last Uchiha with the Sharingan. Kisame said. Naruto went through a few hand signs. Summon. He whispered and pressed his hand onto the ground and a small puff appeared to reveal a small one-tailed blue fox. Krona go get Jiraiya. Naruto said weakly. Yes Naruto-sama. Krona said and ran away. Naruto was panting and tried to stand but fell to his knees again. Naruto watched Sasuke charge a Chidori up. Why would Kakashi teach Sasuke that? Naruto thought as he watched Sasuke charge at Itachi. Itachi easily caught the arm and twisted it violently making a loud snapping noise. You didn't hold enough hate little brother. Itachi said before kicking Sasuke into the wall. Itachi appeared in front of Sasuke right after Sasuke's back hit the wall. Itachi grabbed Sasuke by the throat and held him up and looked directly into his eyes. You fell for the same tricks. Itachi said when suddenly Sasuke screamed and fell unconscious. Now Naruto-kun where were we, he said as he turned to see a tall man with long white hair behind Naruto. Kisame we are leaving we are not strong enough to fight both a Sanin and Naruto-kun. Itachi said as the two leapt away. Naruto are you okay? Jiraiya asked seriously. I have lost a lot of blood. Naruto replied as he lifted his shirt to show the dark red bandages. Naruto jimmed in pain. Go check on Sasuke, I had to re-bandage this anyways. Naruto added. Fine. Jiraiya said as walked over to Sasuke but he kept an eye on Naruto. Dynamic entry, a male voice yelled before a yelp of pain from Jiraiya. Naruto's head snapped up to see Guy standing over Jiraiya's body. Naruto blinked a few time. Wow the ultimate weirdo and knocked out the ultimate pervert. Naruto mumbled. I am sorry Master Jiraiya. Guy exclaimed as he helped the toad sage up. Why did you kick me? Jiraiya exclaimed when he and Guy were thrown apart by snakes. What happened Naruto? Enko demanded. Sasuke team came to get revenge for a prank I did a while ago. Naruto half lied. As you can see he was on the receiving end of an ass whooping. Naruto said smiling up at her. Come on you think Sasuke team could beat me? Naruto asked. He is lying to me. She thought when she saw Guy pick Sasuke up. What was the prank? I took a picture of him in a pretty adorable position and sold it to the females of my class at 20 Ryo a pop. Naruto told her truthfully. What made him adorable? Enko asked. Ask Sakura, she bought 50 photos, you will get a major kick out of it. Naruto replied. How is your wound Naruto? Enko asked as she saw the blood dripping to the ground. It reopened. Naruto told her. I was about to re-wrap it when Guy knocked out the ultimate pervert. Naruto added with a smirk. Oh that reminds me. Enko said as she stalked over to Jiraiya and lifted him off the ground with her snakes and had a kunai pointed at his groin. If he comes back a pervert I will neuter you and then have the medics reattach them so Hinata can get a go at them. She threatened as Guy and Naruto covered their groins in fright. Anko-chan we have to get going while our... He trailed off as a kunai whizzed between his legs. Another word and I won't miss. She said lowly as she dropped Jiraiya. By Naruto-kun. Enko exclaimed before running away. It was then that the villagers started to look into the street. Naruto was still kneeling. You know you perv that I need help. Naruto said, he felt weak from the blood lose. Shut it brat. I just got kicked in the head by a freak. Jiraiya said. Hm I got two kunai stabs and a katana stab in my stomach that has reopened, 
hmm which is more serious? Naruto asked sarcastically. Jiraiya shook his head before lifting Naruto up. You know Hinata will kill you when you get back? Jiraiya told him. Most likely, but I couldn't run. Naruto told him as Jiraiya shook his head. She doesn't care about that, all she will care about is that you did something reckless. He told Naruto. So can you leave me in a alley I am sure that will be less painful. Naruto joked and let out a pained laugh as they walked into a hotel. Two days later Naruto had spent the last two days in bed letting his wound close again. Jiraiya had looked around to find evidence of Akatsuki and his old teammate. Aero-sensei you never did tell me who the new Hokage is going to be. Naruto said. It is my teammate Tsunadeheim, the slug princess. Jiraiya said. She is a field medic neen, second to none at it. If she isn't out of shape she would beat me in a second. He said with a small blush. She is big-breasted isn't she? Naruto asked emotionlessly. Oh my god you will never see any as big as hers. Jiraiya said with a line of drool going down his chin. I don't care about that kind of stuff. Naruto said simply. Not even if Hinata becomes big-breasted, he asked as he started to imagine Hinata in the future. His thought was interrupted by a katana being pressed tightly to his throat. Do not think of my Haim like that. Naruto warned. Only I can think of her like that. Naruto added in his head. Have you gotten a lead on your teammate? Naruto asked sheathing his katana. Yeah supposedly she was seen in a town about a week away. Jiraiya told Naruto. Supposedly? Naruto asked. She has been dodging me for the past thirteen years Naruto, I could not find her at all. Jiraiya told him. I wanted her to take care of you. Jiraiya thought. When are we leaving? Naruto asked. Immediately, she might not be there anymore. Jiraiya told him. Naruto nodded and used his katana to help him stand. This katana was not meant to be a crutch. Naruto thought as he weakly got dressed. Come on we have to go. Jiraiya said as Naruto nodded and the two left the hotel. I have something to pick up for Hinataheim. Naruto said as he walked towards the kimono store. Naruto pushed the door open to see the girl behind the counter. Hello. Naruto said as the girl beamed at him. Hello Naruto. The girl said. Sorry about the window. Naruto said a little embarrassed. I will pay for it. He said as he pulled a scroll from his cloak and placed it on the table and wrote a kanji on it and a pile of money appeared and the girl gawked at the amount of money. This should be enough money. Naruto said as the girl nodded. Um here is your kimono, I hope your girlfriend likes it. The girl said with obvious disappointment. Thanks. Naruto said as he pulled out another seal and sealed the kimono into it. I wonder if this will keep Hinataheim from killing me? Naruto thought as he walked out of the store. Seven days later Naruto and Jiraiya had just made it to the next town. There was a festival going on. Okay Naruto you can go off for an hour or two to have a bit of fun, but later I have a very powerful ninjutsu for you to learn. Jiraiya told him. Okay. Naruto said as the two went their separate ways. The perv pocketed my money pouch. Naruto thought. With Jiraiya Jiraiya held the money pouch away from him and opened it, he saw that nothing happened and looked into it and a blast of blue paint coated his face. How does he fit this much paint into his wallet? Jiraiya thought as he wiped some of the paint off and looked into the wallet again to be hit by water and purple powder. I think I might kill the boy. Jiraiya thought as he looked around to see several people giggling at him. With Naruto, hmm I wonder if Aero-sensei opened my wallet? Naruto thought as he walked through the vendors. Naruto played a few games and sighed with boredom and his stomach growled. I should buy some food. 
Naruto thought as he walked to the food section and bought a bunch of food and sat to eat it. He had a bunch of girls crowd him. Why me? Naruto thought. Who are you? A girl asked. Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto said before he took a bite of food. That is an interesting name, the girl said. Thank you. Naruto said simply. Are two word answers all you know? She asked. Could be. Naruto replied. Do you have a girlfriend? She asked. Yes, I do. Naruto said. I am related to the leader of this village. She said. If you date me you can be influential. The girl added. My girlfriend is Hinata Hayaga the eldest daughter of the Hayashi Hayaga the head of the Hayaga clan. Naruto said simply. Plus I am the black death of Konoha, I don't need more influence. Naruto told her as she stared at him. She wouldn't know if you had a fling. The girl pressed. You obviously don't know about clans of Konoha. Naruto said as he turned to the girl. The Hayagas have the Byakugan, it is a dojitsu that lets them see everything in a 360 degrees, chakra, chakra points, and see through things, tell me do you think it would be wise to mess with her? Naruto asked. The girl growled and stalked away. Geez what is wrong with me? Naruto thought as he finished his food. I need to go find Aero sensei Naruto thought. Sorry ladies but I have to get going. Naruto said as he weakly stood. I hate being wounded. Naruto was stopped by two guards. They both were heavily armed. What? Naruto asked. You are requested by the head of this village. One guard said. Sorry but I am on a mission. Naruto said as they intercepted Naruto again. That does not matter. The other said. Do you want to get into a war with Konoha? Naruto asked. I am on a mission to find the new Hokage and all it takes is a message from me to have a hundred umbu here. Naruto warned. Now move. Naruto said getting angry. The guards stood their grounds. In an instant Naruto's katana was in his hand and the guards drew their weapons, or at least the hilts of the weapons. Do not mess with me I am Naruto Uzumaki the temerary Hokage of Konoha and the Black Death of Konoha. Naruto warned as he sheathed his weapon and passed the two frightened guards. Sheesh just because they have weapons they think they can boss people around. Naruto thought as he walked and was surrounded by thirty guards. The head of the village demands to see you. One said. Naruto pulled his katana out and held it so he could watch his back. You do realize I am a fifth degree master in Kenjutsu right? Naruto asked. Put your weapons away. A fat man ordered. Uzumaki-sama I am sorry about their rudeness. The man said. I am Hakoda Manra. The man said. I just wanted to see you to apologize for my daughter's disrespect. He said. Think nothing of it. Naruto said sheathing his own weapon and let out a hiss of pain. I need to go meet Jiraiya-sensei now. Naruto said and felt weird calling Jiraiya in such respect. Sorry to hold you up. Hakoda said. No problem, um one question. Naruto said. What is closest to the main gate? Hot spring strip club, or a place that has scantily clad women? Naruto asked. A club that has scantily clad women. Hakoda said. It is right there. He added pointing at a club. Thanks. Naruto said as he used his katana as a crutch. I hate being wounded without Kyubi. Naruto thought as he henged into a little cute boy. Naruto walked in to see Jiraiya with three women around him. Grandpa why did you leave me at the gate? Naruto asked and looked to be ready to cry. Jiraiya's mouth dropped open. Naruto transformed back to his normal self. What is this jutsu you wanted to show me? Naruto asked. I hate you Naruto. 
Jiraiya said. Whatever you say Aero-sensei. Naruto replied. Come back in fifteen minutes. Jiraiya said with a perverted giggle. More like two seconds. Naruto said dryly as he turned and walked right into a man. The man spilt a drink on his coat. Ouch that hurt. Naruto mumbled. Hey brat that coat you just ruined costed the boss 300,000 Ryo, a man exclaimed. Like I care. Naruto said. He spilt his own drink on his coat. He added. Do you know who you are talking about, another man asked. This man is an ex chunin of IWA, he is the great Gantetsu, the man said. Hmm a no-named IWA Chunin. Naruto said. You know I have a run on site status on me with anyone under Chunin rank? Naruto asked. I am Naruto Uzumaki the Black Death of Konoha. Naruto said. Ha hey, I bet IWA would love to have you. Gantetsu said as he went to attack Naruto. I guess you will see a demonstration on what you will be making. Jiraiya said as he held his arm back and a ball of chakra formed. That is like my jutsu. Naruto thought. Gan. Jiraiya yelled as he slammed the ball into Gantetsu's stomach making him pinwheeling backwards into a stand. Jiraiya and Naruto walked towards Gantetsu. Jiraiya lifted the man up easily and took his wallet and handed the vendor some money. You have no problem paying for the damages don't you? Jiraiya asked as Gantetsu groaned. And we will take all the balloons and rubber balls you have. Jiraiya added as the vendor nodded and handed a large bag to Jiraiya. Come on Naruto. Jiraiya said as he led Naruto a little ways out of the village. How powerful is this jutsu? Naruto asked. See this tree? Jiraiya asked as he quickly made the Raisingan and slammed it into the tree making it disintegrate. That is how powerful. Naruto whistled. That is powerful but check out my own jutsu. Naruto said as he held his palm out as wind gathered and condensed into his palm in the shape of a sphere. A whistling noise started to increase in volume. Naruto slammed the ball into a tree and nothing happened for a few seconds before the tree trunk exploded in splinters, the tree fell backwards. Seems like yours is the exact opposite of mine, mine is elemental manipulation and yours is chakra manipulation. Naruto said. He already is making a counterpart to the Raisingan. Jiraiya thought as he threw a water balloon at Naruto. Make it explode with you chakra. Jiraiya told him as he picked one up and make the balloon spike in different directions before exploding. So basically I spin my chakra around until it explodes? Naruto asked as he lightly bit onto the balloon and crossed his fingers. Shadow Clone Jutsu He mumbled around the balloon as twenty clones appeared. You know what to do. Naruto said as Jiraiya watched all the clones attempting to make the balloon explode. Naruto will. Get this jutsu in no time. Jiraiya thought with a smirk. Remember take your time this took the fourth Hokage four years of development and three years to make it, it took me three years to make it. Jiraiya told him. Maybe that is because you were peeping on people. Naruto said with a smirk as the clones made the balloon spike a little before it became round again. Well I will be going. Jiraiya said as he walked away. A week later Naruto walked into Jiraiya's and his room and held the balloon over Jiraiya's sleeping form. Naruto started to spin the water in the balloon until it popped drenching Jiraiya. He sputtered and glared at Naruto. What did you do? Jiraiya demanded. I popped it. Naruto said smirking. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes. Prove it. Jiraiya said as Naruto held another balloon and it soon popped. Jiraiya yawned. I guess it is time for the second more difficult step. Jiraiya said as he stood and got dressed. This step you will learn as we walk, I got a hint about Tsunade being in a town two days away. Jiraiya said. Okay let's get going. 
Naruto said as he grabbed his pack. Okay. Jiraiya said as he grabbed his bag. Two days later Naruto and Jiraiya had arrived at yet another border village. The two walked towards a secluded part of town. Naruto I want you to stay out here. Jiraiya said as he walked into a building. He saw men throwing dice. He sat in front of what he suspected was the head man. Hello sir. What can I do for you, the man asked. I heard you had a gambler in here a little while ago. Jiraiya said. We get a lot of those kinds of people. The man said. This is a woman, Tsunade Senju to be exact. Jiraiya said. Yes the legendary sucker was here. The man said. Do you know where she is? Jiraiya asked. How about a little game, the man asked. Even I tell you odd you give me all your money. The man said. Deal. Jiraiya said as he watched the man throw the dice and the were stopping on odd when a large gust of wind blew through the building making the dice flip over to even. Jiraiya let out a sigh of relief. The man told Jiraiya where to go. Thanks. Jiraiya said as he walked out to see Naruto pulling another ball out and throw a ball with a hole in it away. Naruto we are leaving again. Tsunade's last known in Tenzaku Castle. Jiraiya said. About a week away. He added. Okay. Naruto said. QB is still weak. Naruto thought as he held his stomach. A week later Naruto looked up at the hill. Aero sensei didn't you say there was a castle? Naruto asked. Of Kur. Jiraiya trailed off as he looked up to see no castle. Both of them instantly jumped up onto a wall and saw people running. You what happened here? Jiraiya called gaining a man's attention. A giant snake attack. He said before starting to run again. Orochimaru. The two whispered. Let's go Naruto. Jiraiya said as he leapt down with Naruto following suit. They came to a bar and walked in. Jiraiya stopped instantly as he saw a blonde buxom woman. Tsunade slash Jiraiya, the two exclaimed. Naruto blinked a few times as he looked at the woman who looked to be in her early thirties. What are you doing here Jiraiya? Tsunade asked as the two walked over. And who is the brat? This is Naruto Uzumaki. Jiraiya said. Kyubi's Jinchuriki? The brunette and Tsunade thought. And can't an old teammate meet up with his old friends? Jiraiya asked. Seems to be a lot of reunions today. Tsunade said. Sarutobi sensei has died Tsunadeheim. Jiraiya said. I know. Tsunade said simply. The council wants you to be Hokage. Jiraiya added. No. Tsunade said and Jiraiya opened his mouth. Hokage is a fool's game. Anyone who becomes Hokage dies shortly after. I mean look at the fourth Hokage he d. She stopped when she felt an unimaginable amount of killer intent directed at her. Do not say anything bad about the fourth Hokage or I will kill you. Naruto said threateningly. The fourth Hokage died to protect fool, and that makes him a fool. Tsunade said she opened her mouth to speak again but was stopped as Naruto appeared on the table and lifted her effortlessly off the ground. You want a fight? Tsunade asked. Let's take this outside. She said as she hit his arm making him let her go. The two walked out but Jiraiya stopped Tsunade. Don't underestimate this kid and watch out for his stomach. Jiraiya warned. He can't possibly be that powerful. I mean he is a genin. Tsunade said as she walked out. Someone is going to get hurt. Jiraiya thought as he walked out and stood next to Shizun. To make things fair I will only use one finger. Tsunade said. Don't be cocky. Naruto said as he pulled a kunai out and was ready to throw it when Tsunade appeared in front of him and struck upwards knocking his forehead proctor and hood off. Naruto closed his eyes. 
he cracked open his eyes to see Tsunade's finger ready to flick. She released her finger and threw Naruto back ten feet before he rolled to his feet. Damn she is strong. Naruto thought as he rubbed his forehead. Naruto threw a kunai at Tsunade that she flicked away. Naruto instantly charged low and placed his hand on his katana. As he drew closer he whipped his katana out and swung at Tsunade at the same time as he kicked. Tsunade stopped the katana blade with her finger and deflected his kick with her foot. She wouldn't. Jiraiya thought as he watched Swanda cock her arm back and struck Naruto's stomach. No. Jiraiya yelled as all three watched Tsunade's fist disappear into Naruto's stomach. Naruto coughed up blood and fell backwards. W what H happened? Tsunade stuttered. Jiraiya ran over to Naruto and knelt next to him. Tsunade you have to heal him. Jiraiya begged before ripping Naruto's shirt open to reveal the widened katana stab and kunai stabs were opened. What happened to him? Tswanda demanded as she shakily started to heal him. He fought and won against Minato and Kushina. Jiraiya said. But it nearly cost him his life, but then he fought against the one-tailed Jinchuriki. Jiraiya told her as the wounds healed. How is he still alive? Tsunade asked. These wounds would have killed anyone. I personally think it was his love for his lover that kept him alive. Jiraiya said. He is too young to know love. Tsunade scoffed. You would think that but if you saw the look in their eyes when they see each other you can tell it is love. Jiraiya said. Well he will be fine. Tsunade said as she stood up still a bit shakily from seeing all the blood. Jiraiya why is Kyuubi's churka so low? Tsunade asked. She spent most of her chakra fighting Gara, then spent more keeping Naruto alive while he fought Gara. Jiraiya told her. Ugh why does it feel like I got hit by a freight train? Naruto mumbled. How are you awake? Tsunade asked. I heal fast. Naruto said as he gripped his stomach to feel that it was mostly whole, making him look down to see three small cuts. Did Kyuubi wake up? Naruto asked. Nope I healed you. Tsunade said. Hmm that explains why it isn't completely healed. Naruto said as a tick formed on her head. Are you making fun of my healing abilities? Tsunade exclaimed. If I was you would know. Naruto told her as he grabbed his katana and jammed it into the ground to help him stand. Geez why did you hit me in the stomach? Naruto asked. If I knew you were this seriously hurt I would have healed you first then kicked you tiny ass. Tsunade exclaimed at him. Well I am healed now. Naruto said as he stretched a little. How about a rematch? Naruto asked. If I win you acknowledge that the Fouth Hokage was a good Hokage and if I lose you give all my money. Naruto said. Ha hey, how much money could you have? Tsunade asked as Naruto pulled out a scroll as wiped some blood on it and a pile of money came out. I have taken out a lot of missing means. Naruto said. I have ten more scrolls like this. Naruto said as he pocketed the scroll. You are on. Swanda said greedily as Jiraiya groaned. And I will use one finger again. What is it? Shizen whispered. Naruto won 10,000 Ryo on a scratch ticket. Jiraiya said. That isn't all that uncommon. Shizen said. This was a ticket that's max amount one is 5,000. Jiraiya said dryly. What kind of luck he has. Shizun asked as they watched Naruto charge Tsunade and held his arm back and charged an incomplete Rasengan. Shizun's and Tsunade's eyes widened. Tsunade shook her head and slammed her fist into the ground. Naruto's Rasengan slammed into the ground and threw himself away. Damn it Jiraiya what are you thinking teaching him something he will never get? Tsunade yelled at Jiraiya as Shizun ran to Naruto to help him out. Jiraiya smirked at him. What the hell is so funny, 
she exclaimed. One of the great Samnin lost to a Genin. Jiraiya said. I believe a certain blonde Samnin say, and I will. Use one finger again. Jiraiya imitated her voice perfectly. Tswanda's mouth opened and closed. Hey brat. Tsunade called as Shizun pulled him out of the fissure Tsunade's fist created. Damn she has some amazing strength. Naruto thought. What? Naruto asked. How about we make another bet? Tsunade asked. If you win it I will give you this necklace and I will acknowledge that you will become Hokage one day. Tsunade said. Tsunade you can't. Shizun exclaimed. What is so important about it? Naruto asked. That is the Shodai necklace, it is worth three gold mines and the mountains on top of them. Jiraiya explained. And anyone not destined to be Hokage dies shortly after wearing it. Jiraiya added in his head. She must have a lot of faith in the boy. He added. So what do you say? She asked. Sure. Naruto said. You don't want to know what will happen if you lose? Tsunade asked. Nope because I will not lose. Naruto said confidently. Okay. Tsunade sang. I will give you one week to complete the Raisingan and if you don't make a complete one at the end of the week you will give up on being Hokage and I get all your money. She said. Okay. Naruto said as he walked away. Where are you going? She asked. To train, duh. Naruto said. The three walked watched Naruto walk away. Tsunade smirked and pulled a frog wallet. Tsunade I wouldn't do that. Jiraiya warned but she ignored him and only saw the fat wallet. She opened it up and a puff of smoke appeared followed by a pie hitting her in the face. The pie slid off her face and Tsunade tasted some of it. It is good pie. Tsunade said simply before cleaning it off. She saw that the toad was still fat. Was it a trap for pickpockets? Tsunade thought as she looked into the wallet to get blasted with pink powder. She turned to see Jiraiya laughing and Shizun covering her mouth keeping herself from laughing. Tsunade turned to Jiraiya and unleashed on him like an angry gorilla. I will get that brat for this. Tsunade said. Shizun looked into the wallet and nothing happened. She pulled a note out. Tsunade do not think of getting me back, most of my retaliations is accompanied with property damage. Shizun read out loud. She blinked a few times. Is this boy a genius or an expert prankster? Shizun thought as a boxing glove attached to a spring launched over her shoulder and she heard a loud thunk she turned to see Jiraiya on the ground knocked out. This time Tsunade was laughing her ass off. Shizun saw another note. Aero sensei don't try to grope Shizun Nechan. Shizun read out loud over Tsunade's laughter. Six days later it had been six days since Naruto had started his training to complete the Raisingan, he was spending eighteen-hour days of training, rarely stopping for breaks. Tsunade was currently watching the boy make the Raisingan. How can he train so hard and still be alive? Tsunade thought as she saw him attempt to make another Raisingan but ended up making himself fall unconscious from exhaustion. Tsunade walked towards him and knelt next to him. She felt his forehead and checked his hands to see that he had a fever and severe chakra burns on his hands. She shook her head before picking him up in her arms. It didn't take Tsunade long to get to the hotel that the four of them were staying at. She laid Naruto in her bed when Shizun walked in. He will be out for at least two days. Tsunade told Shizun. Tsunade-sama, what are you going to do about tomorrow? Shizun asked. That is none of your concerns. Tsunade said as she turned to her assistant. I don't think Uncle Dan would want th. She was silenced as Tsunade appeared next to her. Sorry Shizun. Tsunade said as Shizun fell forward unconscious. The next morning Naruto groggily opened his eyes and saw the ceiling. Damn, 
I passed out. Naruto exclaimed as he quickly threw his legs over the side of the bed and went to run outside but tripped over something. Naruto looked at the floor to see Shizun groaning on the floor. Naruto quickly went to her side. Shizun Nechan what are you doing sleeping on the floor? Naruto asked. Sleeping? Shizun mumbled before her eyes snapped open. Tsunade, she exclaimed looking around seeing that it was morning. How are you awake? Shizun asked. Even without QB my chakra replenishes at an amazing rate. Naruto told her. Now what happened? Naruto asked. Tsunade-sama is going to go meet with. Orochimaru. She told him. I have to stop her. She added. I am coming. Naruto said as Shizun began to protest. He made me kill my mother. Naruto growled. I am coming. He told her as Shizun stuck her head out the window and a kunai whizzed by her head. She saw Jiraiya leaning against the wall. Holy crap Aero sensei you almost killed her. If I wanted to kill her I would have. Jiraiya said weakly. Plus I am out of whack because Tsunade drugged me. He added. You nearly killed me. Shizun thought dryly as she pulled some pills out. Here take these they will help with the chakra control problem she told him as he looked at her skeptically. Why would I poison an already poisoned man, she asked as he continued to look at her skeptically. Geez fine, she exclaimed exasperated as she popped a pill into her mouth and swallowed it. See fine. She told him as she forced the palms into his hand. Now swallow the pills. She ordered. Jiraiya popped the pills into his mouth and swallowed the pills. Where is she? Jiraiya demanded. You will have to follow me. Shizen said. Fine. Jiraiya said as the three leapt out the window. Naruto sniffed the air. Kabuto is here. Naruto thought as he glanced around. Naruto what is the hold up? Jiraiya asked. I smell something. Naruto said as he looked around. You two go on ahead. Naruto said as he sniffed the air. I don't smell anything. Jiraiya said. Because of the QB my sense of smell is as strong as a kitsune's. Naruto told them. I smell his little toy. Naruto said as he pulled his katana out. Be careful Naruto. Jiraiya said before Shizun and him leapt away. Naruto sniffed again. Where can he be hiding? Naruto thought as he saw movement Naruto instantly started to leap towards the movement. So Naruto-kun you could sense me? Kabuto asked. It is hard to miss when you reek of death and snake summons. Naruto said calmly. Now what shall we do? He added as the two started to circle. Well Naruto-kun I have an appointment. Kabuto said before leaping away with Naruto hot on his tail. My speed still isn't at its max, Naruto thought as he saw Kabuto gaining distance between them. With Tsunade and Orochimaru Tsunade walked towards Orochimaru with green glowing hands. If I do this I get my lover and brother back right? Tsunade asked. Of course Tsunade-chan. Orochimaru said when a kunai nearly hit Tsunade and Kabuto landed behind Orochimaru. Kabuto if you wanted to kill me you will need to do better. Orochimaru said. I guess I would. Kabuto said. But I just saved you Orochimaru-sama, she had enough chakra to kill you. My my Tsunade-chan don't you want to see Dan and Nawaki again? Orochimaru asked. They wouldn't want to see me like this. Tsunade stated simply as she took her coat off. We have to get going Orochimaru, Naruto-kun was right behind me. Kabuto told Orochimaru. I guess I will just have to force you to heal my arm Tsunade-chan. Orochimaru said. I would rather die. Tsunade said as she slammed her fist against the wall behind her making it explode. And I will take you with me. She added as she flew at the two and they leapt away. 
With Jiraiya and Shizen the two were leaping on the rooftops towards the meeting place. Naruto leapt next to them. Did you find that person? Jiraiya asked. Yeah but he got away, my speed isn't at its max right now. Naruto told him. Okay, did you figure out who it was? Jiraiya asked. A boy named Kabuto, he was a Konoha shinobi but he is Orochimaru's right hand man, or at least I think that. Naruto said as they leapt and found a destroyed wall. This is Tsunade-sama's work. Shizen said. This is her jacket. Naruto said picking as he picked it up. She is fighting them. Naruto added. We have to help her. I know. Jiraiya said as they looked around a wall to see Kabuto fighting Tsunade. Looks like Tsunade is winning against Kabuto. Jiraiya said when he saw Kabuto stab his own hand and blood sprayed all over Tsunade. Shit, Kabuto just stabbed his hand. Jiraiya said as he saw Tsunade drop to her knees. I will fight Orochimaru, Shizen you fight Kabuto and Naruto you protect Tsunade at all costs, am I clear? Jiraiya asked leaving no room for arguments. He leapt towards Orochimaru and tackled him as Shizun attacked Kabuto. Come on Tsunade-bachan you have to snap out of it. Naruto said as he wiped some blood from her face. Naruto heard. Shizun scream in pain and his head snapped over to see Shizun holding her leg with Kabuto standing over her. Naruto's mindscape QB was sitting against a tree sleeping. A pulse could be felt. QB started to stir inside of Naruto's mind. When suddenly her eyes snapped open. Real world Naruto felt a pulse inside of him. What is happening? Naruto thought before a flood of chakra ran through his system. Welcome back QB. Naruto thought as he felt his wounds starting to close. What have I missed Naruto-kun? QB asked. Search my memories. Naruto told her. Well Kabuto looks like we are even again. Naruto said with a smirk as he drew his katana out. Hey Naruto-kun we were never equal. Kabuto stated. You are right. Naruto said as he stayed in a defensive position in front of Tsunade. If you think that provoking me will make me leave Tsunade's side you are sadly mistaken. Naruto said emotionlessly. My my Naruto-kun I would never try to provoke you. Kabuto said. But I guess that won't matter when we destroy Konoha. I would never let you destroy Konoha. Naruto told him. Well you are going to die today. Kabuto said as he charged at Naruto. Naruto stabbed through Kabuto's forearm in between the bones. Naruto twisted the katana violently and heard a loud snapping noise. Hey that was a brilliant idea Naruto-kun. Kabuto said as he leapt away and showed that his forearm was healing fast. He heals almost as fast as me. Naruto thought as he readied his katana again. Naruto dodged a blow that was aimed at his head and slashed upward leaving a long cut. Kabuto took a kunai out. Naruto dodged and created an incomplete Rasengan and attempted to hit Kabuto who dodged to the side and tapped Naruto's leg and he heard a loud snapping noise. Naruto's leg almost collapsed. Shit I have to keep him still. Naruto-kun you should compacted the Rasengan just a little more. QB advised. Naruto sheathed his katana as Kabuto closed in on him. Naruto caught Kabuto's fist and winced as the kunai in Kabuto's hand sliced the flesh between his fingers. Okay compact it a little more. Naruto thought as he concentrated on the Rasengan. He felt it stabilize in his hand as Kabuto tried desperately to escape. I don't think so. Naruto stated as he cocked his arm back. Rasengan. Naruto yelled as he slammed the ball of chakra into Kabuto's stomach. Naruto held on to Kabuto as a sphere of chakra surrounded Kabuto and Naruto let go letting Kabuto fly backwards. Naruto collapsed to one knee as he felt his heart slowing down. Naruto looked to see Kabuto slam into a boulder with a reassuring thud. 
Naruto watched as Kabuto slid to the ground. Naruto-kun he severed the chakra lines to your heart and destroyed most of the muscles, I can't heal it. QB said. Ha this will be interesting to see if I live. Naruto thought as he chuckled. Blood was starting to dribble down his chin. Naruto was shocked to see Kabuto starting to stand. He Naruto-kun that would have killed me if I didn't send my chakra to the point of impact and started to heal myself. Kabuto said when his eyes widened and he fell onto his stomach. There is too much damage. Kabuto thought as he saw Naruto start to sway. Hey you must have figured that you are nearly dead. Kabuto said as Naruto started to fall backwards. Who would have thought I would have died like this? Naruto thought. Naruto-kun it is getting dark, so dark. Naruto could hear the fear in her voice. Naruto spit up blood as he saw Tsunade hover over him. I guess I won our bet Tsunade-bachan. Naruto said as felt his lungs starting to fill with blood making him cough blood up. But, you can keep the necklace. Naruto said smiling up at her. No Naruto you can't die, she exclaimed as she cut his shirt with her chakra. She quickly ran her hand over his heart attempting to heal the chakra paths. Please not another one. Tsunade said as she felt his heartbeat starting to slow down. Naruto's mindscape QB was standing in the little light that was in Naruto's mindscape. Who would have thought this is how I would die? QB thought as the light started to fade closer to her. Suddenly she heard drips as the light started to increase again. Real world Tsunade was crying over Naruto's body as his heart slowly started to stop. Please don't take another one from me. Tsunade begged as she pressed her hands to his chest. She felt red chakra suddenly surge in. Naruto and his back arch, Naruto, she exclaimed as she felt his heart rate increasing again. She felt a hand wrap around the necklace around her neck. I, guess, this, is, mine. Naruto said weakly with a smile. You will definitely be a wrench in my plans Naruto-kun. Orochimaru exclaimed as he spit out his sword at Naruto, who was too weak to move. Tsunade appeared in between the sword and Naruto and it pierced her chest. My my Tsunade-chan that was intended for you. Orochimaru said as he ripped the sword from her chest and kicked her away. Now to finish you off. Orochimaru said as he slashed at Naruto who weakly deflected Orochimaru's sword with his katana. I am amazed you can still move. Orochimaru stated and noticed Naruto couldn't move again. Move, move. 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 Naruto thought as he tried to move as the sword moved towards him again. He closed his eyes but didn't feel any pain. Naruto cracked open his eye to see Tsunade over him again. I will not let you kill this boy. Tsunade said lowly. Now Tsunade-chan I don't want to kill you. Orochimaru said as he slashed at her back trying to get her to move. Tsunade weakly kicked out at him. Tsunade-chan how will you beat me if you are shaking so much? He said and saw her stop shaking. I will protect this boy. Tsunade stated. And I will not let you destroy Kanoha because as the Godame Hokage I will not let you. Tsunade exclaimed before dealing a swift strong blow to Orochimaru's chest. Then I will kill you. Orochimaru said. Tsunade made a hand sign and a seal formed on her face. Tsunade you can't do that. Shizen yelled as she finished healing her leg. Let me heal you, she exclaimed. Tsunade started to go through hand signs. Creation Rebirth Tsunade exclaimed as the seal broke and chakra started to flow through her and healed her severe wounds. I cannot be killed like this. Tsunade said as she started to go through hand signs. Summon, she yelled at the same time as her teammates. Three giant forms were standing in the field, one was a toad, another was a slug and the last was a snake. It has been a while Katsuya. Gamabunta said to the slug. It has been a while Gamabunta-kun. Katsuya agreed. 
I could have gone a lot longer without seeing him again. Gamabunta said referring to the snake. But I guess I could use a snake skin wallet. Ha I guess I will be having frog legs for dinner. The snake said making Gamabunta angry. Katsuya-chan take Naruto to Shizun. Tsunade whispered as Katsuya's giant head nodded and a piece of her rose under Naruto in the form of a small slug and it slithered off of Katsuya's head and plummeted to the ground slamming against it with a thud. Katsuya slithered toward Shizun. Lady Tsunade wanted me to take Naruto-kun to you. Katsuya said to Shizun. Try to heal him if you can, I can tell he has a lot of damage done to him. She added. Katsuya-sama can you heal his minor damage? Shizun asked. I will try to heal his leg but then I will have to go back to the main body. Katsuya said as Naruto's leg combined with her body. I felt that Naruto-kun's chest is damaged too, QB is attempting to heal it but she can't get most of her chakra to his chest. Katsuya told Shizun. Okay Katsuya-sama. Shizun said as she ran her green glowing hands over his chest. Heal the chakra lines first. Katsuya advised as she healed Naruto's leg. Shizun nodded and focused on the chakra lines. I have to go Shizun-chan. Katsuya said as Naruto's leg detached from her. Okay Katsuya-sama. Shizun said as the small Katsuya went to the main body. Shizun kept an eye on the battle going on between the three summons and their summoners. She felt Naruto start to stir. Naruto-kun are you awake? she asked. Hmm what happened shizun ne -chan? Naruto asked. Well you somehow convinced Tsunade-sama to become the Godame Hokage. Shizun said. And you almost died. Hinataheim is going to kill me. Naruto mumbled. Hinataheim? Shizun asked. My girlfriend, I told her I was going to take it easy. Naruto told her. Well you are okay now I am sure she won't know. Shizun said as Naruto looked at her. She has the Byakugan. Naruto said. You're screwed. Shizun said with a smirk when they heard a loud thud followed by the ground shaking. They looked over to see Manda with Gamabunta's sword through his mouth, with Tsunade standing on the hilt of the sword with Orochimaru's tongue in her. Hands. She gave a giant tug and Orochimaru flew towards her. She cocked a chakra enhanced fist back. When Orochimaru was in her range she threw her punch and hit Orochimaru in the jaw with a satisfying crunch. Orochimaru flew towards the ground with Tsunade close behind him punching him and kicking him. I have to keep this up. Tsunade thought as she felt her chakra leaving her. She continued to punch him. She finished with a kick that sent Orochimaru a little ways away. They watched as Orochimaru started to stand. I won't be able to beat them. Orochimaru thought as he leapt to Kabuto and the two sunk into the ground. Katsuya and Gamabunta puffed away as Tsunade landed on the ground. Shizun helped Naruto to stand and the two walked over to Tsunade and Jiraiya. As they got closer they saw that Tsunade was aging rapidly. Are you going to be okay? Jiraiya asked as he looked at his teammate. I just need something to eat and a night's rest and I will be fine. Tsunade replied as she looked to see Shizun helping Naruto to get over to them. How are you Naruto? Tsunade asked. I have been better and worse. Naruto replied with a smirk, but that ended when Tsunade lightly bopped him on the head. Don't joke you almost died. Tsunade said. Well I did make a complete Rasengan. Naruto said as Tsunade's eyes widened. I guess I will have to watch him closely so the curse doesn't take him. Tsunade thought as she untied the necklace and tied it around his neck. Come on everyone let's go get some rest. Tsunade said. Yeah you look like you need it Bachan. Naruto mumbled as Tsunade rounded on him. What was that? Tsunade asked threateningly. Nothing Hokage-sama. Naruto said saluting her. That is what I thought, and don't call me Hokage-sama, it makes me feel old. 
Tsunade said as Naruto opened his mouth. Bachan is worse. Can't you call me Tsunade Nechan like you do for Shizun? Tsunade asked. Not going to happen. Naruto replied. How about I think of something? Naruto asked. Fine. Tsunade mumbled. In the meantime I will call you Bachan. Naruto said with a smirk as Tsunade half-heartedly tried to hit him. How about Tsunade-sama? Tsunade suggested as Naruto shook his head. Tsunade-chan? Nope. Naruto said as the four walked towards the hotel they were staying at. Until I think of something you will be Bachan. Naruto said. Fine then until you think of something new I will call you Narachan. Tsunade said as she saw Naruto cringe. Bachan. Naruto exclaimed indignantly. Come on Narachan. Tsunade said with a smirk as Naruto sighed in defeat and followed the three adults to the hotel rooms. Two days later, you really think you can beat me Narachan because you mastered the Rasengan? Tsunade asked with a smirk. No I think I will do better because now that Kyubichan is awake my chakra is a lot higher. Naruto said as he charged at Tsunade. Naruto was in front of Tsunade when his forehead protector flew off his head. He closed his eyes expecting a flick to the forehead, but he didn't feel anything. Naruto opened his eyes right as Tsunade's lips connected with his forehead. That is a special charm. She told the boy. Why can't she kiss me? One guess to who that was. Naruto blushed and looked away from the older woman. She giggled a little. Come on Narachan. Tsunade called to the dazed boy. It had been a few days since Naruto, Shizun, Tsunade, and Jiraiya left Tenzaku Castle, much to the town's people's relief. They were currently at a hot spring that had males females and mix bathing. Tsunade and Shizun went to the female side, Naruto went to the male side, and Jiraiya can you guess it, right the mix bathing. Naruto had his back to the wall with Tsunade and Shizun on the other side. Have you thought of something? Tsunade asked, again. She has been asking every fifteen waking minutes. No, and the more you ask me the less time I have to think. Naruto lied. He had thought of something to call her. Fine Narachan. Tsunade said. You two act like you have known each other your entire lives. Shizun commented. This is not the kind of women I wanted. They heard Jiraiya yell. Want to see? Naruto asked. You bet. Both Shizun and Tsunade said together. They walked to the third wall and Chakra walked up it and looked over to see Jiraiya in a pool with a bunch of primates. Naruto lost concentration and fell backwards onto his back because of his laughter. Oh my! I didn't know he was into this kind of thing. Tsunade said with a smirk as Shizun lost her concentration and followed Naruto's reaction and fell into the water. I can't breathe. Naruto said as he laughed. Well I am going to the casino. Tsunade said. I want to come too. Naruto called as he reigned in his laughter. Okay. She called and the three left Jiraiya waiting in the mixed bathing. Shizun and Tsunade dried off and waited outside for Naruto. It didn't take him long to come out with just a towel around his waist. Someone took my robe. Naruto said as Shizun stared and Tsunade tilted her head to the side. How can a thirteen-year-old boy have muscles like that? Tsunade and Shizun thought together. Come on Narachan let's go get you a new robe. Tsunade said. How about I don't call you Bachan in public and you can't call me Narachan in public? Naruto compromised. Come on I am the black death of Kanoha and being called Narachan kinda takes away the fear I hold. Fine. Tsunade said. Okay Tsunade. Naruto said. Why does she get respected like that? Jiraiya yelled. It is amazing how good his hearing is. Naruto said as Tsunade and Shizun nodded as they walked to the front desk. 
Hello? Tsunade asked gaining the 16-year-old's girl's attention. Yes. She trailed off as she looked at Naruto. What can I do for you? She asked Naruto naughtily. I need a robe. Naruto said simply. Does he really not see that she wants to get into his pants, or towel? Tsunade thought. Hmm you will have to trade your towel for it. The girl dared. Naruto shrugged and pulled his towel off to show that he was wearing boxers. The girl groaned and handed the robe over as Naruto handed the towel over. They heard a puff and smoke come out of his robes. What was that? Tsunade asked. A shadow clone henged into a pair of boxers. Naruto said with a smirk. Now that is smart. Tsunade said as she wrapped an arm around his shoulder. Now I am going to show you how to gamble, this place has a casino that doesn't have a gambling age. Tsunade said as she led him away with Tsunade on his side. Should I be worried that she knows about the casino? Naruto whispered to Shizun. With her the only time you need to worry is if she gets a winning streak. Shizun replied. If she wins big then we are in trouble. She added. Hmm okay. Naruto replied as they walked into a casino. Okay Naruto-kun follow me. Tsunade said as she grabbed his hand and dragged him away. She sat him on the seat next to her. Okay Naruto-kun this game is called Blackjack the point of the game is to get 21, 10, Jack, Queen, and King are worth 10, Aces are 11. She said as Naruto nodded and bit his thumb and pulled the sleeve of his robe up to reveal a storage seal on it. He ran his blood over the seal and a scroll opened and Naruto ran his thumb over that scroll and a pile of money popped out. Naruto gave Tsunade a fourth of it. Naruto placed some money on the table and the cards were dealt. Naruto got two kings. Now stay Naruto. Tsunade said. Actually I would like to split. Naruto said as he separated the kings and the dealer dealt out the other two kings. Split again. Naruto said and separated the kings again and he got dealt four aces. Tsunade's, Shizun's, and the dealer's mouths dropped open. Ha I win. Naruto said. What luck. Tsunade trailed off. The dealer handed Naruto the chips he won. Naruto sealed the rest of his money and put the scroll back into his arm. So shall we go again? Naruto asked as he set up money in four different places. The dealer dealt the cards and Naruto got all queens and kings. I will split them all. Naruto said as the dealer dealt out four aces and four jacks. I will split these. Naruto said with a smirk as the dealer dealt out four tens. How is he so lucky? Tsunade thought as she saw the dealer get eighteen. You win. The dealer said as he gave Naruto a big pile of chips. Hey I guess I am on a roll. Naruto said as he went to put the money down. Sir I think you should give someone else a chance to win. The dealer said. Naruto shrugged. I guess I will go play poker. Naruto said while he gathered his chips and went to a poker table, Tsunade close behind. Naruto sat at the table with four other people around him. Tsunade was looking over his shoulder as Naruto placed a thousand Ryo chip into the ante. Are you sure you want to place us little boy? A burly man asked. Yup. Naruto said as he looked at his cards. How the hell is this even possible? Tsunade thought as she kept a straight face. Naruto saw a man throw in ten thousand Ryo. Naruto threw in the same amount. How many would you like boy, a skinny man asked. None. Naruto replied calmly showing absolutely no emotions. Fine. The skinny man said as the cubby man placed two cards down and the skinny man dealt the two cards and the man smirked. He threw down 30,000 Ryo. Naruto threw down 60,000 Ryo. I raise you by 30,000 Ryo. 
Naruto said calmly as the cubby man threw in the 30,000 Ryo. You should learn how to play boy. The cubby man said as he placed four nines on the table. He went to reach for the chips. Hm I only have this. Naruto said throwing down his cards to show a royal straight flush. I do believe I won. Naruto said as he reached for the money. You cheated. The cubby man said as he pulled out a knife. No you are. Naruto said as he appeared behind him and a piece of the man's coat fell off to show a device. You four are cheating and stacking the deck so any of you will win but the new person. But you could say I have a demon's luck. Naruto said as he grabbed his chips. He heard QB growl in the recesses of his mind. I am joking. Naruto said. I am cashing out now. Naruto told Tsunade. Naruto-kun you have some amazing luck. Tsunade said. I know, but I don't want to clean out the entire casino and run out of luck. Naruto said simply. See Naruto-kun knows when to leave. Shizun stated. Yeah well Naruto just won what like 200,000 Ryo? Tsunade asked. Give or take. Naruto said. But he could have easily cleaned that place out but he didn't. Shizen said. How do you think Jiraiya is doing? Naruto asked. Hmm I don't know. I hope he didn't stay in the hot spring. Tsunade said. With Jiraiya Jiraiya was bright red with apes, primates, heavy set women, and elderly women around him. This is not what I wanted. Jiraiya thought sadly as one of the primates ate bugs out of his hair. Back to Naruto, how about we get something to eat? Naruto asked. You treating? Tsunade asked. When haven't I treated? Naruto asked. I believe I paid for every meal that you and Jiraiya have ate. Naruto said dryly. What about Shizun? Tsunade asked. She offered to pay her own bill but I thought, hey I am already spending a fortune on basically sake why not add a little more money? Naruto said dryly as Tswanda grinned. New rule Hokage-sama, you get one bottle of sake and that is it. Naruto told her. That isn't nice. Tsunade pouted. I am sick of paying for your sake. Naruto told her. Do you know what I will pay for the food and you will pay for the drinks? Naruto told Tsunade. Hmm, so one bottle of sake? Tsunade asked as Naruto and nodded as the three walked into a restaurant. For three, the waitress asked as Naruto nodded. She led them to a table and the three sat down. I will come back and get your drinks. She said as she gave Naruto a lingering look. You sure are a ladies' man Naruto-kun? Shizun said with a smirk. Hm I guess I am. Naruto said returning her smirk. But Hinataheim can get a bit protective over me. Tsunade got an evil thought and smirked. She just knows how handsome you are Naruto-kun. Shizun complimented. Thanks shizun chan Naruto said. So what can I get you three? The waitress said gaining their attention. I will have your biggest and most expansive bottle of sake. Tsunade said as Naruto glared at her. I will have some green tea. Shizen said. Jasmine tea please. Naruto said as the lady nodded. Okay I will be right back. The lady said. I hate you. Naruto said to Tsunade. I love you too. Tsunade said cheerily as the waitress came back with a giant bottle of sake. Is that? She trailed off with a trail of drool running down her chin. Okay the demon sake for you. The waitress said as she placed the bottle and sake cup in front of Tsunade. Green tea for you. She said placing a cup in front of Shizun. And jasmine tea for you. She said placing the cup in front of him. Thank you. Naruto said as Tsunade poured a cup of sake and gingerly brought it to her lips and tasted the sake. She instantly looked like she was in heaven. 
is it that good? Shizen whispered to Naruto, he just shrugged. But smirked instantly. Hey Tsunade? Naruto asked gaining her attention. Yeah, she asked. How about when we get to the hotel room we have a little drinking contest and whoever loses has to buy the next meal? Naruto asked. Deal, she exclaimed. He has no chance. She thought as she turned her undivided attention to her sake. Naruto-kun she has been drinking sake for almost her entire life. Shizen said. She doesn't have Kyubi in her. Naruto said with a smirk. She doesn't allow me to get drunk. Something about it being a bitch healing a hangover. Naruto added. So you just conned Tsunade-sama into buying the next meal? Shizen asked as Naruto nodded. That is me Naruto-kun. I just call it revenge for ordering that monstrosity. Naruto said pointing to the sake she was drinking. Hmm I guess so. Shizen said as she sipped her tea. The waitress came back. What can I get you three, she asked. I will have the barbecue ribs, miso soup. Shizen said. I will have the same. Naruto said as the waitress turned to Tsunade who was too busy sipping her sake. Naruto growled and grabbed the bottle and cup from her. She sent a death glare at him. Order your food. Naruto ordered. I am paying for this and I will have her take it back. Naruto threatened as Tsunade looked like she was about to die. I will have whatever they are having. Tsunade said. Now gimme it back, she exclaimed as she grabbed the bottle and cup. And people think I am the kid. Naruto stated as Shizun and the waitress giggled. Naruto handed the menus to the waitress and she walked away. MMM sake. Tsunade moaned out. Naruto and Shizun stared at Tsunade. Did she sound like she was having? I think so. Naruto said making Shizun stare at him. And how would you know what it sounds like? Shizun asked. Um. Naruto trailed off. I mean I have never done it. Naruto said truthfully as Shizun looked at him with a critical eye. The waitress came over with the food. This isn't over Naruto. Shizun stated as the waitress placed the food in front of them. Geez fine. Naruto mumbled. Tsunade it is time to eat. Naruto said taking the bottle away. Hey I was drinking that, she exclaimed. Damn it is already half empty. Naruto exclaimed. We have been here for twenty minutes. So what that stuff is so good, she exclaimed at him as she attempted to grab the bottle but Naruto moved it out of her reach. It is time to eat. Naruto told her. It is time to drink. Tsunade clarified. Eat. Drink. Eat. Drink. Guys. Shizun exclaimed gaining their attention. You are gaining attention to us, she scolded. Sorry. The two chimed together. Now eat. She ordered. Okay. The two said again and starting eating. Naruto-kun may I please have some sake? Tsunade asked as she gave him the puppy dog eyes. Fine. Naruto said as he poured some sake into her cup. Naruto placed the bottle in front of her. You stop eating that food and drink just sake I will take the bottle away. Naruto threatened. Okay. Tsunade said. So what were you two talking about before the food came, she asked taking a bite of food. Nothing. Naruto said quickly. I think Naruto-kun came close to having sex. Shizun stated as Naruto's head slammed into the table next to his plate. Oh ho he starts early. Tsunade teased. Naruto was mortified. I didn't have sex. Naruto mumbled embarrassed. I will have to have someone give him the talk. Tsunade thought as they ate. So did it feel good? Tsunade asked as Naruto took a drink and almost choked on it. 
Naruto saw Tsunade take a drink of her sake. Actually it felt amazing. Naruto said as Tsunade spit her drink out while she coughed. Naruto and Shizen laughed at her expression. Touche Naruto. Tsunade said. I am not known as the Hokage of pranks for nothing. Naruto joked. I bet. Tsunade said as she wiped her mouth. You know that little stun of yours cost you about 200 Ryo. Tsunade said as Naruto's mouth dropped open. Wow. Shizen trailed off as she finished her food. The waitress walked up. I have you check. She said placing it on the table. Naruto picked the check up and his eyes widened. That bottle cost 20,000 RYO. Naruto yelled. Oh ho this is the last time I am letting pick the sake, for the next three weeks that we are out of Kanoha you are getting the cheapest sake the places have. Naruto told her. I hope that bottle was worth it. He told. Her as she nodded smiling. Very, that was the best sake I ever had. Tsunade said as Naruto glared at her and placed the money on the table. I hate you right now. Naruto said. Oh I love you so much for buying that sake for me. She said as she held up the bottle that was still half full. She grabbed him and shoved his head into her breasts. Naruto struggled and she eventually released him. I still hate you. Naruto said. You know people would kill to be hugged like that by me. Tsunade said. Well I am not one of them. Naruto stated as he walked away. Oh come on Naruto you can't be that mad. Tsunade said. You just made me spend 20,000 Ryo on one bottle of sake, you are lucky I am even talking to you. Naruto told her. Tsunade opened her mouth but Shizun laid a hand on her shoulder. Not now. Shizun mouthed. What about our drinking contest? Tsunade asked. You would have lost. Shizun told her. QB doesn't allow him to get drunk. So he conned me? Tsunade asked as Shizun nodded as they walked to their hotel room. Naruto was still not talking to her. Tsunade was actually a little sad. I am sure Naruto-kun will talk to you in no time. Shizun consoled her. For days later Naruto had not even tried to speak with Tsunade for those days and she was beginning to feel incredibly guilty. She watched him talk with Shizun but not to her. Naruto? Tsunade asked gaining Naruto's attention. I am sorry for taking advantage of you buying dinner. Please talk to me again. She pleaded. Now was that so hard? Naruto asked. Huh? Tsunade asked. Naruto-kun was waiting for you to apologize for that incident. Shizun told her. Brat do you realize how much guilt you made me feel? Tsunade demanded. Tsunade-sama you had to learn what you did was wrong. Shizun said. Why does he get an apology? Jiraiya asked. You guys left me in that hot spring for six hours, he exclaimed. You could have gotten out at any time. Tsunade said. So I am forgiven? Tsunade clarified. Yeah you are. Naruto said before Tsunade hugged him close to her breasts. Don't ever not talk to me again. She ordered. That is an order from the Hokage. She added. Okay. Naruto said smiling up at her. Why can't I get hugs like that? Jiraiya asked. That is because you would try to feel me up. Tsunade said dryly. A week later they were now only a week away from Kanoha. They had stopped at a festival. Shizun and Tsunade wrapped their arms around his making him blush. What are you two doing? Naruto asked embarrassed. We have to keep the fan girls away. Tsunade reasoned. I see how they look at you and if we stay on your arms they can't get to you. I also can't have any fun. Naruto added for her. Tsunadeheim you can always keep the women off of me. Jiraiya said. 
Believe me you old perv you don't have that problem. Tsunade said dryly as Jiraiya's hopes were crushed. Plus Naruto-kun is a lot cuter. Shizen added, basically kicking him in the stomach while he was down. Well ladies I need to get more gifts for Hinataheim and my little brother and his friends. Naruto said as the three walked away from the crying Jiraiya. He sure is a baby. Tsunade said. I know. Shizen agreed. Now what do you want to do Naruto-kun? Shizen asked. Well I need to get accessories for Hinataheim's kimono I got for her. Naruto said. Can I see the kimono? Shizun asked as Naruto nodded and reached into his cloak somehow without Shizun letting go and pulled a scroll out and unsealed the kimono. She gasped when she held it out. This is so beautiful. Shizun whispered. Yes it is Naruto-kun, you sure do have some taste. Tsunade said. Well I try my best for my Tenshiheim. Naruto said. I have heard you call Hinata that before why? Tswanda asked. She has the ability to grow two indigo bird wings out of her back making her look like an angel. Naruto told Tsunade. Oh. Tsunade said as she felt the silk. Oh can you buy me one of these, she asked. Me too? Shizen asked. Sure why not? Naruto said. But that is if we pass through that village. The one where you got attacked by Itachi Uchiha? Tsunade clarified. You are going to make Aero sensei go that way aren't you? Naruto asked as Tsunade nodded. Naruto sighed. Fine. Naruto said as Tsunade smiled. But you will owe me a lot of ramen for this. Okay. I mean how much ramen can you eat? Tsunade agreed. Let's. Just say the ramen stand in Kanoha made almost all of their money on me alone. Naruto said smirking at Tsunade. I can eat twenty to thirty bowls. Naruto said. A week? Tsunade asked amazed. A meal. Naruto corrected her as he mouth dropped open. Yes I know it isn't healthy but I didn't know how to cook until I started hanging out with Hinataheim. Naruto told them. Let me guess because of the QB in you, you couldn't go into most places. Tsunade said as Naruto nodded to her. Which places let you eat at their restaurants? Ichiraku Ramen, and the Akimichi place. Naruto told her as she growled. That is horrible. Shizen said. I know but they were scared of me. Naruto told her. I wasn't liked much when I was younger. Naruto told them. Well you shouldn't care about the people who don't care about you. Tsunade said. Only care for the few that are truly your friends. She told him. Or family. Naruto added smiling at them. Yes or that. Tsunade said. Well let's go get some things for this girl. Tsunade said as the two girls dragged Naruto away. I have feeling this will impact my savings a lot. Naruto thought as they dragged him to store after store. For days later the four of them came to the town that Naruto fought Itachi and Kisame. Naruto walked into the store that he bought Hinata her kimono. The same girl was behind the counter with three girls in front of it they were talking. Oh Naruto-kun. The girl behind the counter said happy to see Naruto. She instantly saw how close Shizun and Tsunade were to Naruto. Who are these women? the girl asked. This is Tsunade Kaasan and Shizun Nechan. Naruto said as Tsunade's mouth dropped open. He thinks of me as his mother? Tsunade thought with a warm feeling spreading in her chest. She instantly shoved his head into the valley that she calls her breasts. Ah stop I can't breathe. Naruto exclaimed making the girls giggle a bit. Oh I am sorry Naruto-kun. Tsunade said. Naruto straightened his hair and cloak and cleared his throat. I need to get kimonos for these two, that are made out of the previous kimono I asked you to make. Naruto told the girl. 
Okay Naruto-kun. The girl said. Can you two please come with me so I can get your measurements, the girl asked as she lead Shizun and Tsunade to the back of the shop. The instant Shizun and Tsunade were away the three girls mobbed Naruto. Will you go out with me, the three asked at once. Sorry I have a girlfriend. Naruto said, the three girls opened their mouths. And I am very faithful to her. Naruto added as they all groaned. Tsunade and Shizun walked out. She said the kimonos will be done in two days. Tsunade said as Naruto nodded. Okay. Naruto said as the three left to see Jiraiya still crying from four days ago. You are a cry baby. Well excuse me for not having two stunning women on both of my arms. Jiraiya said sarcastically. Hey what can I say, you have it when you have it. Naruto said with a smirk as the three walked away from the crying Jiraiya. Hmm I wonder if I henge into Naruto I will get women? Jiraiya thought. If I find out you henged into me I will kick your ass Iro sensei Naruto yelled to Jiraiya crushing Jiraiya's last hope. Three days later the four of them were fifteen minutes from Kanoha. For some odd reason Tsunade changed her age to that of her fourteen-year-old self. Naruto had no idea why. Well that was until they were ten minutes away when Tsunade latched onto his arm and wouldn't let go. What are you doing? Naruto exclaimed. But Naruto-kun I am not doing anything. Tsunade said when they saw a shadow circling them. You did this on purpose. Naruto said as he glared at Tsunade who smiled innocently. Suddenly Hinata landed in front of them with her hands on her hips. Wow Naruto wasn't kidding when he saw she looked like an angel with those wings. Tsunade thought as Naruto struggled against her grip. Naruto-kun what is going on? Hinata demanded her anger was easily noticeable on her voice. Nothing is going on. Naruto said as he got his arm out of Tsunade's grip. Then why did I find you with another woman's arms wrapped around you? She demanded again. Do not worry Hinata I am not after you man. Tsunade said as she reverted to her thirty-year-old self. Hinata blinked a few times. I am Tsunade Senju. Tsunade said. T the H Hokage, she stuttered as Tsunade nodded. I am sorry for reacting. That way. Hinata apologized. Oh do not worry, I am just getting him back for pranking me when we first met. Tsunade said as Hinata turned a dangerous look to Naruto. What she did tell you was that C took my wallet. Naruto told Hinata. Ah uh, which one, she asked. I believe it is the pie in the face, then powder, then the boxing glove. Naruto told her. You hit the Hokage with a boxing glove? Hinata asked. Oh no I have it set up so if Aero sensei isn't around it won't activate. Naruto said as Jiraiya stared at him. What the hell did I do to you? He exclaimed. Naruto just ignored him as Hinata's wings went back into her back. It is good to see my arrow Tenshi. Naruto whispered into Hinata's ear making her shiver. Are you healed yet? she asked as Naruto nodded. Um Hokage-sama I am stealing Naruto-kun. Hinata said as the two vanished in Hinata's red whirlpool Shunshin. Hmm what do you think she will do to him? Tsunade asked. By that look in her eye I suspect she is ripping his clothes off. Shizun said not knowing how true her answer was. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button and subscribe for more content. Support the original author by clicking their profile link in the pinned comment of the first video of this series, they deserve the love. Want early access and exclusive content? Join my Patreon community, link below. Your support fuels these videos. Drop a comment with your thoughts, and I'll catch you in the next video. Stay entertained. Stay safe.